Hi Sugar Snaps, welcome back to the studio and another episode of the Pine Needle Basket Weaving Series. My name is Brittany, if you're new here, welcome in, thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be dyeing pine needles, but before we go into that, be sure to check out this video up here and in the description below all about how to gather and clean your pine needles in preparation for weaving or dyeing. And you need pine needles to be able to dye pine needles. So I go through all the process of where to find them or purchase them if you don't have access to pine needles in your area and how to process them so that they're ready for your weaving and dyeing projects. Without further ado, let's dive into how to prepare your pine needles and how to dye them. Now I wanna share a dyeing technique that I use for dyeing pine needles. So we'll go through the process of preparing the needles by washing them and then dyeing them to take on color. Now this is not the only way nor necessarily is it the best way to dye pine needles. This is just a way that I've found that works for me and you may end up with different results than I do. So please note that uh, pine needles are a natural material and so we're going to dye them and try to get consistent results. But dyeing a natural material isn't always consistent because pine needles vary in a lot of ways. So if you have harvested your pine needles and they're fresh and green like these guys, you're going to end up with different results when you dye than if you collected them. And I just have a little nub in a tuft of brown needles here, but these were sun bleached. And so the green color faded and they've turned brown. And the result of dyeing on this set of needles will be different than the result of dyeing on this set of needles. Now, this is when I, I just freshly picked these up outside. So this one's still fresh. It just fell off the tree maybe a couple days ago. So it's still green and fresh. And this one has been sitting out there or dried in the sun over the summer and then has been sitting on the ground for who knows how long. Uh, and so it's dried. I'll probably allow it to dry indoors for several more days just to ensure that it's fully dried and um, has shrunk to its finished size. But these are still fresh from outside. These guys, here are examples of of pine needles that I have dried indoors for a couple of weeks. So you can see a difference. The fresh green is a lot brighter. The dried has faded quite a bit. And the browns look very similar. It's hard to really tell a difference because I harvested them both when they had already dried outside. So basically all of the drying process happened outdoors naturally. The drying process for these, I just set inside as soon as I brought them in. And this one, I kept in a dark place to maintain the green color. If you set it in light, the green will fade, like this guy. But the end results of dyeing on these dried pine needles are going to be different because I start out with a green one for this and I'd start out with a brown one for this. So anything that I dye on the brown ones are going to shift towards a warm tone because I have kind of an orangey undertone on the natural pine needle. And anything that I dye over the green pine needles will shift towards a green or a, a cooler tone. So a blue or green or purplish color. So keeping that in mind as you dye your pine needles, if you're working with green pine needles, probably your best results will come when working with a cool color palette. Your best results for the brown pine needles will be a, a warmer color dye, like a red or an orange or yellow. So taking that into consideration as you're dyeing. Another variable as we do the cleaning and preparing is how wet and how long these have soaked. As we do the cleaning and the um, soaking and then start into the dyeing, we'll be allowing them to sit in water for a good amount of time. And that will kind of open up the fiber to take on as much of the pigment as possible. Pine needles tend to be more acidic. Pine trees have more acidity in them. And so we're going to soak these in white vinegar because the pine needles seem to like a acidic pH or a lower pH in their water. So we'll soak these in white vinegar. That also seems to help the dye to stay on the pine needles and not wash out as easily as it does otherwise. 
Another thing to note is that you probably don't want to rinse the pine needles right after they come out of the dye bath. I like to allow them to slightly dry before using them or before rinsing them after dyeing. So it's best to use your pine needles out of the dye bath and go right into um, either rinsing them and then straight into basket weaving so that they don't dry before you start using them. But if you can allow them to dry just a little bit so that the dye kind of sets on the surface of the pine needle, I've had pretty good results doing that and not having as much dye wash out of the finished pine needles. It may cause some of the dye to transfer to your hands as you're weaving the basket. So perhaps wearing gloves when you're working with the color in the pine needles. Uh, but you will end up with a stronger color in your finished basket. And if you're doing any sort of shellac or uh, finishing on the finished piece, that will hold in that color. And so it won't wipe off onto anything you put in the basket if you're coating your basket with a finish. If you're not, consider using a plain pine needle just because if you're using your pine needle basket for any sort of food or anything, there's still the possibility of the dye crocking or rubbing off of the pine needles. So again, this is just one way to tie pine needles. Not the only way, not necessarily the best way, just the way that I found works well for me. So if you don't like my way, that is totally fine. You can use a different process. Um, and if your results end up different than mine, just kind of consider maybe some of the differences, whether that was the needle color you started with or the pH of your water. I'm going to be using white vinegar in my water, so shifting it more acidic. The type of dye that you use will impact how long you soak it in the dye bath, how long you soak it in the white vinegar. There's a lot of things to keep into consideration. All that said, let's dive into preparing our pine needles. Now let's dive into cleaning and dyeing pine needles. Next up, we're going to soak the pine needles in the white vinegar. This is preparing the uh, surface of the pine needle to take on as much pigment as possible. This shifts the pH back to an acidity, lower pH, so it just seems to work best on the pine needles to get them to absorb dye. With your bin full of warm water, we're going to add one cup of white distilled vinegar to the water and swish this around to make sure that it's nice and incorporated. And then add your pine needles. And allow them to move around and to swish around in the white vinegar bath just so that they aren't clumped together. And now with these pine needles soaking, we're gonna let this sit for about an hour and just absorb as much of the white vinegar as possible. Um, this will prepare the surface for the dye. Now with the pine needles soaked in the white vinegar mixture for an hour, I am ready to transfer them into a dye bath. So we need to make our dye baths and then they can sit on the stove and do their thing and then we'll let them sit in the dye bath cooling overnight and check them tomorrow. I'm going to show you how to use RIT dyes on your pine needles because they're really accessible. You can get them at pretty much any craft store and even some grocery store. Let's start out with a coral and a brown. So I'm going to lift out some of these pine needles and I have pots of water that I've about three inches of water in these pots. Just enough that when I put my bundle in, it covers the pine needles. The you don't need a lot of water for dyeing pine needles. I prefer using less water, just enough to cover them so that I don't have as much water waste or dye waste at the end. And I can get a more concentrated dye bath if there's less water as well. So now for each of these pots, I'm going to add two teaspoons of the liquid dye. This is liquid root dye. And this coral will be an experiment because normally I would suggest using a darker color to show up on the surface, but I'm gonna try this coral and see what happens. So make sure to mix your bottle before you pour in dye. Mix it up to get all of the dye mixed well so that any dried particles get shaken up. And then I'll do this brown in this pot over here. Oops. So shake it up really well. And then when you put your two teaspoons of dye into the pot, 
go in and mix up with the spoon to get all of the excess dye off of the spoon. It's valuable stuff, so you wanna make the most of it. Stir that in, make sure the dye bath is nice and mixed. And this stuff does stain, so you may want to wear gloves if you don't wanna get splattered. Now, Rip Dye suggests adding salt to your dye bath to increase the effectiveness of the dye. So I'm going to add a quarter cup of salt to each of these dye baths because they're smaller baths, they don't need a ton of salt, but enough to uh, be effective. So I'll pour that in and stir that in. When the salt has completely dissolved and you mixed it all in, grab a handful of your pine needles. And I'm not gonna rinse these, I'll put them directly in from the vinegar bath. So I'll lay these in, and I'm trying to keep them from cracking or breaking as I lay them in. You wanna work really gently as you do this because you wanna maintain the quality of the pine needles. So I'll stick them in there and move them around so that the dye can reach all areas. Grab another handful. And I'll put these ones into the brown pot. Now we'll place these guys on the stove on medium heat and allow them to sit just below a simmer for about two hours. The pots are gonna simmer away on the stove and do their dying thing. And I'm going to let them sit overnight to soak in the dye and cool down. And then we'll revisit them. It'll be tomorrow for me. Hello, this is day two for me, prepping the pine needles and doing the dyeing. They have been sitting in the dye bath. I allowed them to sit on heat for about three to four hours. So ended up holding it at medium high and then turning it down to low for the last two hours. Longer than I had suggested before, but I wanted to make sure that it soaked up as much dye as possible. And I can see in my pot that a lot of the dye was soaked up. It's a lot less uh, concentrated than it was when I first mixed the dye bath. So that's a good sign. So once they sat on the heat for four hours, then I let them cool in the pot on the stove overnight. So they've been in the dye for quite a while now and I'm ready to transfer them out of the dye bath into my wash bins. In these, I'll let the pine needles dry. If you have some sort of platform that you can lay the pine needles out, so that there's airflow on both sides, that's a great option because it keeps the airflow circulating, it will dry them faster and keep them from molding in your bin. I'm gonna put them in here because I'll be using them shortly so they won't have time to mold, um, but just as an option. So for this, without rinsing, I'm just gonna lift these out. You'll want to use gloves for this. Transfer them to my bin and spread them out so that they can dry and I'll just get all those pine needles out. And these ended up being a nice deep brown color. You can exhaust your dye baths by adding a little bit more dye, adding more pine needles in there and using them again to try to use up as much of the dye as possible before disposing of your dye bath. We use RIT dye, which if you are in city water, it's safe to dispose of your dye bath in the sink. I'm going to allow these pine needles to dry for a few hours, not until they're totally dry, but just so that the dye, I give it time to set on the pine needles, and then I could move on to using them in baskets uh, if I'm ready to start weaving right away. Or I would wrap them in paper towels and put them in a Ziploc bag in the fridge if I want to store them for a few days. Uh, if you're not going to get to your basket weaving right away, store them in paper towels in the fridge until you can get to them. If you're not going to be using them for a week or more, you can dry these. So allow them to completely dry and then store them wrapped in newspaper or in a brown paper bag or somewhere that has nice airflow. And uh, then you can re-soak them or dampen them with a spray bottle when you're ready to weave with them. Just know that after dyeing, all of the soaking and the drying process uh, will cause them to be more brittle than your other pine needles. So keep that in mind as you work that with them. Be really gentle as you start to weave with your dyed pine needles. When you are ready to transfer your dyed 
pine needles to storage. If you want to keep them damp and you're gonna use them shortly, you'll put them into paper towels. So I'll lay a couple layers of paper towels out on my work surface here, like so, and then lay the pine needles on top and we'll roll these up. I'm gonna layer them in so that the ends are all tucked in. Roll them up in the paper towels like so. The paper towels will keep the moisture in, but also wick it away from the pine needles themselves. And then place the butt ends or the nubbin ends of the pine needles into the bag first so you don't break the tips. And then zip it closed. And now this you can store in the fridge. I have the samples of the pine needles we dyed, the brown writ dye as well as the coral writ dye. These dyed really well. The variegation on the pine needles does show through on the coral, but the dark brown, because it's such a dark color, dyed pretty evenly and really complemented the natural brown of the pine needles. When you're dyeing pine needles, it's probably safest to go with a darker color dye because the surface of the pine needle tends to have a pigment already or a color already, so you're trying to over dye that. And so something that's a richer, bolder color is going to do better over dyeing. I did coral on these pine needles and it looks very similar in result to the wine Brit dye that I used on um, this other batch of pine needles. The color ends up looking very similar, very reddish. So it may be a challenge to get intricacies in different shades because you're starting out with the base color. Again, if you want to go with more cool tone colors, try to use green pine needles that you've dried and allowed them to stay that natural green color. If you're going with a warm tone, use a brown pine needle to start out with when you're dying, and that will really help the end result to um, complement the color that you choose. There's a wide array of colors in the pine needles naturally. If you're drying them when they're green and you keep them uh, away from sunlight, they're gonna dry green. And so you'll have some nice sagey greens from those. If they were sun bleached outside, they're going to be a lighter brown. If you pour boiling water over the pine needles, they turn a rustier, richer uh, terracotta color uh, when they dry. And then the natural fallen dry color of pine needles is a light brown. So there's kind of a rainbow that you can achieve from the natural pine needle itself, depending on when you harvest and how you dry it as you're processing it. But it's also fun to play with the writ dyes and see what colors you can create with the dyes themselves. We've cleaned our pine needles and prepared them to start weaving with, and some of them we've dyed and gotten them ready um, in a color. And now we're ready to move on to start weaving with the pine needles that we've gathered and processed. I'm gonna end this video here, but be sure to check back next week. I'll be continuing my pine needle experiments and basket weaving projects, and I'd love for you to join me there. If you're watching this after January of 2023, you can find the links in the description below for the rest of the videos in this series. Thanks so much for joining me in the studio today. I hope you enjoy pine needle preparation and I will see you next week for another pine needle video. Happy making.